Let's check out uh, integrating Ipswich's Move It Transfer application uh, with Azure Active Directory so we can get single sign-on. The dream for all applications, right? Okay, so first thing, let me show you where I'm at here. So I'm logged on to my Move It Transfer server. So you can see in the address bar that I'm, I'm logged into the local host. And I'm also, in my other tab, I am logged into uh, the Azure portal. So we we'll are walking through uh, some stuff here. So the first thing we're actually going to do is inside of the Azure portal is we're going to bring up uh, Azure Active Directory and the enterprise applications. And here, this is where we want to create the, the Move It application here in Azure. So the first thing we're going to do is select a new application and do a quick search for Move It. There we go. And we're going to select this one here. And I'm going to leave it the default name uh, just because the default name uh, is easy to identify it with. And then just select add. All right, so once you have that application set up in Azure, uh, we're going to go ahead and look at the single sign-on settings for it. And this window is what came up automatically. If you didn't land here for whatever reason, we should be able to actually see the application show up here in the all applications view once we refresh it, of course. Uh, so we can open the application from here and then uh, get to the single sign-on option as well. And so here, uh, this is where we are going to set our single sign-on settings. So the mode uh, needs to be set to SAML based. And here is where it gets a little tricky. So we've got to come up with the stand on URL, the identifier or the entity ID, uh, and then the reply URL. So the sign on URL, this is what your, uh, your users are using to sign in to move it. Uh, and in this case, it's literally going to be uh, for me, localhost uh, with uh, HTTPS. And of course this will most likely be different for you because you, and the only reason for me I'm using localhost is I'm doing it all on the same server. Uh, so in a, in a production environment, localhost will not work. So make sure you actually look up the correct sign on URL for yourself. Uh, and then the identifier, so the entity ID, uh, this is going to be in, so we're going to, I'm back in uh, into move it here. We're going to go to the settings or look at the single sign on settings. And the identifier is this uh, value right here, this entity ID. And so we're going to take that and we're going to go back into Azure and paste that into our entity ID value. And the reply URL, this one gets a little bit tricky. Uh, so you notice that it has the pattern down here uh, where it has the, the server.domain.com uh, slash SAML slash SSO slash HTTP dash post. Uh, so this one's actually going to be uh, your sign on URL slash and then your tenant ID since we're working inside of Azure. And I'm just going to cheat here and copy and paste. And then it's going to be slash SAML slash SSO slash HTTP dash post. So there we go. And then we got those settings in there. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. There we go. So it gave us the notification that it saved it. And so the next thing we want to do is download uh, that XML, the metadata XML, so we can import it into move it. So I'm going to go ahead and download it. So I'm going to hit the download button save it and then we're going to go back over uh, to move it here and we're going to scroll down so i'm still inside of the settings and then the single sign-on settings and we're going to select the option to add an identity provider and here we're going to grab uh, that metadata file that we just downloaded that xml file and select add identity provider so there we go they checked out it liked that xml so then we'll select the option to edit the identity provider and this is where we actually want to first enable it. Uh, so otherwise it won't work. And make sure you hit save, because uh, all these different sections, uh, they all have their own save button. So if we don't hit save here and save, hit save further down, it won't actually save that enabled setting. And then further on down inside of the federated identity provider user settings, uh, this is where we want to select uh, the login names. So we're going to select SAML name ID. And for the full name and email, we're selecting other these are different values that we'll be pasting in here. And this is actually straight from Microsoft. So for the full name or uh, inputting this value as well as uh, this value as well uh, for the email address. And I'll make sure that these are in the description. You don't have to worry about trying to scribble them down right now. And then we're going to, I'm going to leave these auto create account on sign on. So this will create the user once the user logs in using SSO. That's, that's what we want. And I'll we'll get that. We'll demonstrate that here in a minute. 
So then I'm going to go and hit save. So before the user can actually log in to move it using that single sign on application, we need to make sure that they've been added to it. So we're going to switch back over to uh, the user portal here. And on the left above single sign on, we're going to go to the users and groups. And this is where we can add a user. And if you're adding a group, it's the same, it's the same option here. We're going to select uh, under users. I'm going to select myself uh, because I want to be able to log into it just uh, as an example. And I'm going to sign it here. So now this user shows up. And so now if we were to launch a new window here, and I'm going to bring up the login page for move it again, select this option down here for try single sign on. And what this will do, you can see that it brings us right to the Microsoft page. So this, so this is where we would sign in using our Microsoft account. So I'm going to go ahead and get my Microsoft account put in here. Let's see, I'm going to select no, do not stay signed in. So there we go. So now you can see that it shows up here uh, towards the top that we're signed into TechSnip. So that's just the name of our local MoveIt's transfer server as Anthony Howell, so myself. So that's perfect. So the other thing we'd need to test now is I'm going to switch back to the MoveIt transfer window that we were initially logged into. This is where I'm logged in as an admin for MoveIt. Uh, if we go back to the users here, we should now see that we have a user that was created from that single sign-on process. So that is how you integrate MoveIt Transfer with Azure Active Directory so that you can enable single sign-on for your users.